night that increased the number of people who attended the meeting that Donald Trump Jr. had with this Russian lawyer in 2016, including a Russian lobbyist. And by the way, some outlets are reporting the man has ties to Russian intelligence, although he denies it. Now this comes as The Hill is breaking another major story tonight about who Donald Trump Jr. met with and how they're tied to the Democrats. That's right, the Democrats. According to The Hill, this Russian lobbying effort has ties to three Russian businessmen and the lobbying team included a former Democratic congressman and a former government official. Now, the report also details how these pro-Russian lobbyists, including one of the people who met with Donald Trump Jr., also tried to meet with Democrat and Republican members of Congress. So in other words, a lot of people involved in this. And we're also learning tonight that back in March, Senator Chuck Grassley, he published a complaint where he detailed how a Russian lobbyist in this story worked with that group we've been telling you about, Fusion GPS. Remember, they published a fake document about President Trump, and that goes to the Ritz-Carlton, and that goes to hookers. Remember all that? But they were there to lobby Congress on the Magnitsky Act. Remember the one we're talking about? That's the one that matters. There's also new information on how several Obama administration agencies allowed this Russian lawyer to enter the U.S. back in 2015 and stay until through her June 9th meeting with Donald Trump Jr. So it sounds like John Kerry, Loretta Lynch, and Jay Johnson all have a lot of explaining to do tonight. Because after all, if this Russian lawyer was such a threat, like the left and the media is claiming, well then, why was she allowed into the country? Why did she get a special waiver and allowed to stay? Once again, as we begin to peel back the layers of this onion and learn more and more about truth and facts, this is now boomeranging back onto the Democratic Party. Plus a stunning new revelation about the Clintons, their financial ties to Russia, and more potential evidence of a major pay-to-play scheme with millions of dollars. Now, in a WikiLeaks email, allegedly from the Clinton campaign chairman, John Podesta, his inbox, a staffer actually bragged about stopping a story that tied Clinton to the Magnitsky Act, and it reads in part, quote, with the help of the research team, we killed a Bloomberg story trying to link Hillary Rodham Clinton's opposition to the Magnitsky Act and the bill to a $500,000 speech that William Jefferson Clinton gave in Moscow. By the way, double his normal speaking fee. Now, the campaign was able to kill that story, but the Wall Street Journal reported that back in 2010, while Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State and opposed this particular act, well, quote, Bill Clinton participated in a question and answer session at a Renaissance Capital Investors Conference where he was paid $500,000 and after the appearance, Mr. Clinton received a personal thank you call. From who? Vladimir P Putin, then the Russian Prime Minister. The government news agency TASS reported that. And in that same article, a Clinton spokesman, well, did push back against that connection but this isn't the only evidence of pay-to-play and wrongdoing from the Clintons that they've gotten a pass on. We're going to expose that in a second. But first, the Democrats, the Destroy Trump media, have for months breathlessly, hysterically, been feigning moral outrage and pushing those black helicopter tinfoil hat conspiracy theories about collusion. When in fact, they now are the ones. They have been colluding the entire time, all in an effort, to damage, to delegitimize, and ultimately overturn an election of you, the American people, and destroy the president. Let's go back to the campaign. Remember WikiLeaks? They exposed this unholy alliance between the Clinton campaign and the press. There was a highly orchestrated plot between the Clinton campaign, the media. Why? They wanted Hillary elected. Now, the evidence is overwhelming. It's incontrovertible, including, remember CNN? Oh, yes, fake news. Well, remember they gave the Clinton team debate questions ahead of time. And by the way, does anyone ever remember that poor Bernie Sanders was railroaded and the fix was in and it was a rigged primary? Now, by the way, this is why that Clinton was given a free pass by the media despite a mountain of evidence of felonies, crimes, wrongdoing, inexcusable behavior. And it's why now the media refuses to even cover massive scandals that you, the American people, need to know about. They don't care to search for answers. They're not looking for the truth. They have political, ideological interests. And of course, that's advancing that radical all left-wing agenda and of course hurting President Trump. Now just take a look at this disgusting display from Democrats. This is just earlier today. Some of them, and they've been doing this since November 9th, talking about 
the president and impeachment. Watch this. So many of us are attempting in every way that we possibly can uh, to unveil the criminal activity, the unconstitutional activity of this president and his family. So I have dubbed them the uh, criminal clan a long time ago. I have, I have always been reluctant because I think impeachment is something that has an impact on the country. So if it, when the facts are clear, the law is certainly clear, when the facts are clear, uh, then this Congress can make a decision. Now here's the thing, when it comes to Democrats once again calling for impeachment, it doesn't matter what does or doesn't happen. This has been their goal for a very long time. All these cries, impeachment, impeachment, all the hysteria, all the conspiracy theories, it's really about distracting you, the American people, from real scandals that they're not reporting on that we're investigating and of course we will continue to investigate we will continue to expose them because you deserve answers the truth and people need to be held responsible for their actions for example back in January we've been telling you Politico uncovered a massive huge scandal much bigger than Trump Russia here's the headline Ukrainian efforts to sabotage Trump oh a foreign government backfire Kiev officials scrambling to make amends with the president-elect after quietly working to boost Clinton. Now that story, as we've been telling you, it details how a DNC paid operative, Alexandra Chalupa, spread, she literally spearheaded a plan along with the Ukrainian government, Ukrainian ambassador, to hurt Donald Trump's campaign and boost Hillary Clinton. And political highlights in the, play, in the, in the piece how Chalupa once worked for the Clinton White House, worked to try to expose former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort and they were successful including meeting with the Ukrainian diplomats and the Ukrainian embassy and Chalupa said that those Ukrainian diplomats were helpful when it came to finding information they were researching it disseminating that information and the bombshell quote about Chalupa well she shared her findings with officials from the DNC and Clinton's campaign oh that's called collusion but Chalupa's efforts didn't end there. Remember, she also said that she would help, quote, a lot of journalists, their willing accomplices in the media in writing stories about Manafort to try to hurt the Trump campaign. Now, we've reached out again to Chalupa. We haven't heard back. Shocking. Now, as we said last night on the program, she needs to be called in by the Republicans. They have the power to do this. Put her under oath. Make her testify to Congress. What did she know? When did she know it? How did she get this information? Who did she share the information with? And Congress also needs to hear from the Ukrainian ambassador she was meeting. Remember, they sat down in the embassy. And we can't stop there. The ENC, they were briefed. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, she needs to be put under oath and tell you, the American people, what she knows about this scandal. And on top of that, if they brief the campaign, which the report says they did, all right, bring in John Podesta. Put him under oath. He needs to testify about the information Chalupa passed on to the campaign. Robbie Mook as well. Now, this is a major scandal, but only the tip of the iceberg of what needs to be investigated. We still have the Russian dossier. Remember Christopher Steele? That's the former intelligence agent, Great Britain. He wrote that fake news dossier about Donald Trump, and by the way, paid for some of the information. It cited Russian sources, and then the group connected to Hillary, uh, that's Fusion GPS. Remember, they were sending it around, and, and the Democrats, they were using that phony information to attack, then candidate, now President Trump. They all need to be brought before Congress under oath and answer questions. Then, of course, we got the former FBI director, Comey. He wanted to pay this guy 50 grand and his removal of government information from the FBI, leaking it to the New York Times and helping to get his friend to be a special counsel. Let's put him under oath in this. Uh, the special counsel ended up becoming Comey's buddy, Robert Mueller. Oh, okay, then he hires Hillary Clinton's attorney. We've been saying this over and over again. It is now time to start investigating the investigator. You're not hearing about any of this from the mainstream media. Now, Mueller may be actually breaking out the law by carrying out this investigation when it's James Comey and his BFF is the key witness. And Mueller's hiring, let's see, members to his team, donating thousands and thousands to... Obama and Clinton, take a look at the graphic. His investigators have donated tens and tens of thousands of dollars to the likes of Hillary and Obama. And what's even worse is one of the lawyers of Mueller's team, 
Well, he was working for Clinton and the Clinton Foundation. And we've also learned that the former Obama Attorney General, Loretta Lynch, influenced the investigation into the email server scandal, pressuring James Comey to call it a matter instead of an investigation. Then, of course, the 40-minute tarmac meeting with Bill Clinton. When are we going to put these people under oath? It's got to happen sooner than later. And by the way, go to all of this. It includes, you know, reopening. This is the most important part. If we're going to have equal justice under the law, reopen Hillary Clinton's email investigation. Since we know, well, that in that particular case, Lynch influenced that investigation. Only a matter? Not really. There's also Hillary breaking the law, having secret, top secret, special access program, classified information on her server. That's mishandling by definition. And then destroying some. Then the corrupt Uranium One deal. Remember, she was serving as Secretary of State, approved the transfer of up to 20% America's uranium, the foundational material for nuclear weapons. A real Russian conspiracy. That goes to Vladimir Putin. That goes to the Russians. When people involved in that deal kicked back as much as $145 million into the Clinton Foundation. That's called bribery where I grew up. And while Bill Clinton doubled his speaking fees in Moscow, Nobody else is telling you this. It's outrageous, the double standard. It is beyond anything I've seen in my lifetime. 